Hey guys, welcome to Need It, Make It. So I don't know about you, but I hear all the time that people do not have issues with PLA warping. It's just not a problem. And the same goes for PETG. But when it comes to printing ABS, that's not at all the case. And the same goes for ASA. People have a lot of trouble with these materials. But I'm not so sure about warpage on PLA. So we're going to really see if we can get to the bottom of warpage for each of these three materials. So stick around. So PLA is probably one of the easiest filaments to print with. It is a fairly low temperature printing material. It's available in a ton of different colors. It's supposed to be biodegradable, although that's a little bit up for debate. And of course that it doesn't warp. Wait, it doesn't warp? Yeah, I've heard it doesn't warp. No, it warps. How do you know? Uh, yeah, I've seen it warp. More people these days are getting into 3D printing and they're also printing a lot more functional parts and mechanical parts. Those parts need to fit together and precision is important here. So I think getting an understanding of warpage with regards to 3D printing is going to be important and learning about the reality of what we're having to deal with here. We already know that a lot of materials expand when they are heated and that is especially true for the plastics that we use for 3D printing. One of the only exceptions that I know of is going to be Teflon. Teflon is a completely different type of plastic because instead of expanding it actually burns instead and it releases toxic fumes when you're doing that. This is going to sound a little bit technical, but I will get to the point. Just see if you can bear with me with this part. If we're printing PLA, PLA material has a coefficient of thermal expansion of about 0.68 units of measure per degree per meter. So what that actually means is that we will see for every degree Celsius of increase of this material, we will see a 0.068 millimeters per meter expansion. So if we're looking at 3D printing this material, we can maybe think about printing this at 200 degrees Celsius. Right now it's room temperature 20 degrees Celsius. We'll see 180 degrees Celsius temperature change. So if we multiply this out, we can come out with 12.24 millimeters per meter expansion. So if you have a meter, we're going to have 12.24 millimeters of expansion over that distance. It's not exactly that simple because when we 3D print a part, the temperature is not the same throughout the entire part and they're not actually solid parts either. So there's a little bit more to it. But if we're 3D printing this material, we're somewhere in the range of about 1% expansion that we would need to deal with. So the expansion with PETG is less. It's about 0.5. And we will print this material at quite a bit higher temperature. So it's a bit of a wash and we're in and around the 1% mark. So ABS is a little bit different than the other two. It's coefficient of expansion is higher. It's at about 0.73, which means that we're going to see about a 1.5% increase in size. Again, this material is going to be printed at a little bit higher temperature, so we do need to account for that little bit higher temperature as well. So about 1.5, 1, 1 for 3D printing anyways. Luckily, when we 3D print, we don't tend to see much of a warpage issue because most of the parts are pretty small. When you start to increase the size of the parts, and some of the 3D printers these days are getting really big, it does become more of an issue. So I wanted to do a little demonstration. I'm going to bring you in really, really close here. You can see what's going on. But this part is PLA, and it's already warped. I'm going to show you what happens when we add a little bit of heat to the top and how quickly that deforms the part. Okay, so I've tried to bring you in close on this area. The temperature on here is 20 degrees Celsius exactly. Hopefully that's showing up on. So we're at 33, 34, 38, 40 degrees, 40 degrees, and 20 degrees, exactly. 20 degrees. Okay, I didn't really want to go too much hotter than that. And now you can see And now you can see. So what's really happening is when I heat this top layer, or top several layers, it's applying pressure outward and trying to cup that part. In this case, it was already cupped the opposite direction. So instead of 
cupping it, it actually flattened it out. Um, but now it's cooled off. We're at 30 degrees. So you can see that the, the cup is back and we have the wobble back as well. So one of the most important features of any 3D printer is the enclosure. It's going to reduce the rapid rate of cooling that we would see while our prints are running and reduce the temperature difference that we would see between the highest and the lowest. Now one other benefit of the enclosure is that it can allow the part to cool a little bit more uniformly after it's finished. So let's get some prints going. What I'm going to do is butter up the build plate. And I'm going to do one more thing, and that is to add mouse ears to my prints within Orca Slicer. But I'm going to adjust the settings a little bit and remove the offset. And I'm doing that because I'd like those mouse ears to become one with my part as well. Hopefully that's going to reduce any chance of the sharp corners on my prints lifting off of the build plate. If the adhesion was good enough, we should see no difference while it's actually printing. But what's really going to happen is there's going to be stresses that are trying to lift this build plate off of the magnetic plate that's below it. But we should be able to measure those differences after the prints are finished. So for our first three tests we're going to do, we have a lightweight print which has two walls, five bottoms, four tops, and 15% infill. And we're going to print this with the door closed. And so for PLA, we're going to see a chamber temperature reach around 38 degrees Celsius. For PETG and for ABS, because the bed temperature is going to be higher, we're going to reach a higher chamber temperature of about 43 degrees Celsius. prints had great adhesion, we're going to let these prints cool and then remove them from the build plate. So I'm going to repeat those same tests, but this time I'm going to be doing a heavy print with six walls, five tops, four bottoms, and 35% infill. These prints are nearly twice the amount of material that's being extruded versus the lightweight ones. And again, we're going to print these with the door closed and we're reaching the same chamber temperatures of course. And again, these prints all had good adhesion and did not come away from the build plate while they were printing. The final three tests that I want to do are going to be all heavy prints as well. But I'm going to be opening the door completely on the printer. And what that's going to do is create a lot more airflow and the chamber temperature is going to be dramatically lower. So while these are printing, I thought I could go over some of the factors and what we have to contend with when it comes to warpage on a 3D print. So we have a heated bed, we have glue stick, we're going to get good adhesion to the build plate. The heated bed also provides a source of steady warmth from below which helps to keep the print from cooling too much and from shrinking too much before they finish. And if there is enough force applied, the build plate will come off of the magnet just a little bit. This is partly the reason that most people don't even know their prints are warping because it's really hard to see. This is different from these kinds of problems. These are easy to see and once you lose adhesion it can quickly get out of control. Now after enough layers have been deposited, the strength of all of those layers below help to resist any further warpage. So I've measured each of these in the center and at the ends and then averaged out the differences to create a little graph of the warpage that's occurred during the printing process. And as we increase the amount of material extruded, we would expect to have an increase in the stresses and subsequently the warpage. And that's true for PETG and ABS. But when printing PLA in the enclosure, it seems to have prevented the warpage from getting any worse. PETG was affected slightly and ABS even more so. So it changes a bit when the doors open. And by the way, this is still with the top of the printer in place, so it's not the worst case scenario. PLA was impacted more in this case than PETG, which I find interesting. ABS, as you might have expected, really struggled. Now, I wanted to play you this clip and you can see a bit better what's happening with the ABS and what happens with each material but to a lesser extent. When we compare the print just after it finished, when everything is still hot and it's still nicely adhered to the build plate, to a print when it's cooling, you can see that the one that's cooler has lifted the build plate quite a bit. But then when we compare the print that just finished to the one which is completely cooled and released, you can see that there is enough force to lift that build plate off of the magnet. And this is what's happening when the print is going as well. 
So after all these tests, I decided to make one more print with the door open this time and with the top off. And this is a lightweight print for PLA. And you can see that if you're printing light duty prints with PLA, they're not impacted that much, but there still is a little bit of warpage. So does PLA warp? Yes, it does warp, just like any of the other plastic materials we'll be printing with. But if we print PLA in an enclosure, it seems to be to a lesser extent, but then there are some downsides of that as well. For example, on the prints that I was making, I lost some definition on the corners here on my prints. So cooling is a problem if we're gonna be printing PLA in an enclosure. So it's gonna be a bit of a balance. We could prop the door open a little bit, we could prop the top up a little bit. We could also increase the fans on the inside as well, whether it's the auxiliary fan or the part cooling fan as well. So you can play around with those settings a little bit just to dial it right in, but there is a benefit to printing PLA in an enclosure to reduce the amount of warpage you're gonna see. Now I've personally had good success with PET-G. Specifically when I print it in an open air environment, I found that the warpage isn't really that noticeable. In fact, some of the prints that I've made, though they would have rounded corners, have stayed completely flat or as flat as you'd ever want them to be. When I place them on my surface plate, I couldn't tell that there was any lifting whatsoever. Now that may not always be the case because there are so many different factors involved, whether it's how heavy duty you're printing your part, what the part actually is that you're printing, how big it is, bed adhesion, for example, all of these things are gonna to contribute to it. And even to some extent, which manufacturer you buy from and the chemical makeup of that particular filament. So if you wanna print PLA in an enclosure and reduce the amount of warpage, there is another option and that is just to slow down your print. But I have fast printers, I don't really wanna slow my prints down. Guys, we're only just touching the surface when it comes to warpage of 3D prints, but I'd really like to hear from you when it comes to this topic. Are you having any issues with warpage? And if you have had any problems, what do you do to combat it? Or do you think it's just not an issue at all? I read every single comment and I try and respond to every comment as well. So if you wanna see me make a fool of myself, make sure you watch to the end of the video. So I am full-time on content creation now, so every subscription from you guys helps. So please do this, do this, and do that if you can. And if you want to help support the channel in another way, you can visit my Patreon page down below in the link. And if you have video ideas, I'd like to hear from you in the comments section below as well. Guys, take care and we'll see you on the next one. Okay, I'm gonna get into some scientific mumbo jumbo here. So what that means, so what that means is for every degree difference, tempers, so what that means is for every degree difference that we have temperature in. So what that means is for every degree Celsius that we have difference between the original and the bleh. It only took me four takes to get to this point. I don't know about you, but I hear it all. And one other benefit of the enclosure is that it can uniformly, and what I'm, and why I'm, so for our first three tests, we have our lightweight print, which is gonna be 35% infill. These prints are nearly two times, I'm gonna scratch that. Oh, come on. And what I'm, and why I'm, it's actually really hard to, uh. And of course that, it doesn't work. Wait, it doesn't work? Yeah, I've heard it doesn't work. No, it works. How do you know? Uh, yeah, I've seen it work.